Hello. Okay, so we're going through and styling my hair. If you're new here, my name is Gal. I'm a curly hairstylist. I work out of Ottawa, Canada in a salon called Curlology. Um, and every Wednesday I go live before my shift and I show you how I style my hair for the week. I only style my hair. I'm out of breath. <laughs> I only style my hair one time every week. I only wash my hair one time every seven days. Let's be very frank. Not everybody can do that. Hi, Danielle. Daniel, Daniel. Uh, not everybody can do that. Um, if you have very fine hair, uh, hair that uh, gets oily at the root very quickly, maybe you have to shampoo your hair every three, every four days. Um, Unless there's like a medical issue for it, I highly recommend against washing your hair, shampooing your hair every single day. If you have coarser hair or even medium hair, you might be able to shampoo your hair once a week. Um, and one of the biggest barriers to being able to shampoo your hair once a week is the fact that you don't clarify your hair. If you have a buildup on your hair, it's gonna make your hair get oily a lot faster. So if you don't currently like, one second. If you don't currently have, uh, I forget how I was going to say that, but anyways, you sh most people need two different shampoos, or most curlies, and wavies, curlies, kinky coilies, need two different shampoos. You need like your everyday shampoo, and then you also need a clarifying shampoo. Your everyday shampoo is going to be a little bit gentler, a little bit less harsh on your hair. Harsh isn't quite the right word, but a little bit less cleansing, I should say. And then your clarifying shampoo is gonna be one that you use usually every four shampoos to remove buildup from your hair. Okay, so to get started, my goals for my hair, I like lots of volume and I like to control, there we go, sorry, Instagram is getting all glowy. I don't know why it's getting like that. Maybe we'll do that. Um, I. Um, I like my goals for my hair, and this is the first question that you should ask yourself before you uh, get into like deciding what hair routine, what products are right for your hair. Is what are your goals for your hair? Because not everybody has the same goals. Like, do you want your to enhance your curl? Do you want lots of volume? Do you want a control frizz? Not everybody is super pressed about frizz because if you have super silky hair, your hair might not get frizzy as easily. Versus some people, their hair gets frizzy really, really easily. So controlling frizz is a big goal. Um, so for me, I want to control frizz. I want to um, uh, I want to have lots of volume, uh, or at least as much volume as I can without losing too much definition. Um, and I want to encourage my curl. Somebody says, any idea which main ingredient a clarifying shampoo needs to have? I used to talk more about ingredients. However, I don't talk about them as much now. And the reason for that is I watched a really great presentation by one of the formulators at Anasi, um, and she was talking about how, yes, ingredients are important. However, we at home are not formulators. And what, what ingredient is in a product, it alone, in isolation, is not a whole story. It's how it's formulated, what it's combined with, how much of that ingredient is in a product. Um, like, it's not a full story. Um, so I don't, so the, the short answer to my question is no, I, I don't know off the top of my head. But the second question, uh, sorry, the, the long answer I have is you're far better off to um, just do your research on uh, like what is a, a, a highly recommended clarifying shampoo than to try and deep dive into, okay, well, does this have, because a product could have that ingredient and could still not be a good clarifying shampoo. Does that make sense? Um, because it could not be a well-formulated product. Um, like for example, it could have that ingredient, but it could also have uh, silicones that are building up on your hair at the same time. 
Does that make sense? So <laughs> just because it has the ingredient that you're looking for doesn't mean it's going to do the job. Um, so you want to um, make sure that it's a highly recommended product and not just um, pick and choose. Yeah, like you want to look at a product as a whole, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so because I'm looking to really control my frizz, I like to apply my products to soaking wet hair. That is the number one thing that you can do to, uh, you're welcome, um, to control frizz. That's the easiest thing you can do to control frizz. Apply products to soaking wet hair. So even though I did just get out of the shower, my hair has become higher porosity. Um, so I like to resaturate my hair before I apply my products. Ideally, I would recommend bringing your styling products right into the shower with you, but of course I can't do that because I'm live. And then I actually re-wet my hair. Um, <laughs> uh, and re-wet my hair after I apply my products as well. Okay, so I'm gonna bring you with me because this is why I like to recommend doing this in the shower because this is how wet I like my hair to be because of how quickly it dries. Whoops. If your hair doesn't dry quite as quickly as mine, you could have it a little bit less wet than this, but generally I would make sure it's this wet and just do it in the shower. The first product I'm gonna put in my hair is the Serenity Smoothing Cream. This is a blowout cream. Okay, uh, I love it because it's a, a light, I use it in the place of a lightweight curl cream. It's gonna add moisture to my hair, frizz control, um, and it also has some thermal protection because it's meant for blowing your hair straight, and it's by Inner Sense. And I'm gonna be pretty generous with it. So I'm gonna put about that much in to start. And I really like to concentrate it on this like patch right at the top of my hair that goes quite coarse. Gonna add a little bit more than that. And thank you. I think the previous homeowners got like a clearance on tile. Cause yeah, there's like an excessive amount of tile work in this bathroom. And yet, weirdly, the shower has no tile in it. The shower is like rolls of laminate. <sighs> okay, so my hair gets frizzy easily. So I'm raking through that curl cream to help add moisture and um, I also did deep treatments. Thank you. Uh, I also did deep treatments on my hair today. Okay. Okay, so we're raking all that product through. The next product I'm gonna put in my hair is called I Create Definition. So, um, this product is going to add definition so it's a, you use it in place of, Bre Brendan, why are you in this line? Do you have curly hair? Um, um, okay, so the most people are gonna use a base product and a topper product. So the, uh, the base product is typically like a curl cream and your topper product is going to be like a gel for most folks, okay? I use a, uh, uh, the uh, blowout cream as my base product. 
um, because it has thermal protection and it is lightweight and my hair tends to like lightweight products. And then for my topper product, again, because I like lightweight products, because I like my hair to dry really quickly and because I like lots of volume, um, I use a combination of foams and mousses as my topper products, but I like very like strong hold because like I said, I only wash my hair once a week, okay? So I'm going to use iCreate Definition Styling Foam and I'm gonna rake about, I would say 10 pumps of this, or I'm gonna do about eight pumps of this through my hair, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna start with three pumps. And if you're layering products, a good rule of thumb when it comes to the order of the products is you want to start with the lightest products and you want to go towards the heaviest products. Okay. So I love the iCreate Definition product. If you've ever used a foam before, you know they're typically pretty soft hold products. Um, and they, but they allow you to get a lot of volume. The iCreate Definition is very unique in the sense that it is stronger hold than most gels that you're gonna use. And it's gonna, you can really overdo it with the iCreate Definition uh, gel, uh, foam. So like if you've got fine hair, the first time you use it, I would be careful and really only use maybe like one or two pumps. Yes, I just used a lot of pumps, but I have a lot of hair that can handle it and I don't mind having a really strong cast. So just be careful <laughs> the first time you use it because, and if you can't break the cast, dial it back the next time you use it. Okay. So once I can feel that foam all the way through my hair. Um, yeah, so the InnerSense always calls their products, I create something, they're styling products. So I put in the Serenity Smoothing Cream for the blowout cream first, and then I went in with I Create Definition, and it's their Stronghold Foam. I love it for so many different hair types. A lot of hair types will just use it as a topper on top of a gel or um, like to add extra hold. Um, I'm using it under a mousse because it's you use products from lightest to heaviest and the mousse is going to be a little bit heavier than the foam. So you could use it under a gel. Okay, so now I'm going to go in. I was weed walking it whacking yesterday, so my hands are like cramping up. So I like can't get moose out. Okay. You're welcome. Yes, it's all inner sense. Okay, so here I'm gonna try this amount of mousse. The mousse helps my hair to clump. You know how with gel your hair clumps really, really nicely? I find with I create definition my hair doesn't clump as well, even though my hair is soaking wet. So I like to use the mousse really to help a little bit with balance and just help my hair clump. And again, something that a lot of people who are new to taking care of their waves, curls, kinks, or coils don't necessarily think about is the fact that you might have different textures or curl patterns on your head. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have damage or something. You might have damage in one area of your head. You definitely might. Um, uh, yes, I'm wearing my hair curly today wavy curly, however you describe it. Um, uh, so I have very naturally different hair textures on my head. I have like a medium to coarse section right at my, like right here, and it's more silky everywhere else on my head. Um, so because of that, 
I have to sp pay special attention to this area on my head, especially when I'm, I, where I'm uh, applying product, okay? So I have to add more cream to that area. I have to add more eye cream. Def I have to add more product than I would in area other areas of my head. And like when I'm deep conditioning, I have to be aware to add extra deep conditioner to that area. Sometimes I even do an extra deep conditioning treatment just to that area on days when I don't deep condition my hair. So you have to be aware um, of these different areas on your head. Some people have dramatically different patterns on their head or different textures, like silky patterns, silky hair on their sides, and then like a coarse patch at the nape of their neck or something like that. So once you're aware, and that might even result in them needing to use completely different styling products in different areas of their hair. And it can be really, really helpful to become aware of that. Um, and it will make styling your hair much, much easier than uh, if you have dramatically different patterns on your head. Not everybody has this. Some people just have subtle differences on their head so they can treat all of their hair the same. Um, but if you do have dramatically different patterns on your head, becoming aware of that makes a big difference. Okay, my hair is already pushing the water out, so I'm gonna re-wet my hair before I go into the rake and shake method. And I just like, you could use a spray bottle, but for my hair, I like to literally pour water over it because it pushes water out so much. One second. My hair pushes water out so much that um, if I, what am I trying to say? If I just use a spray bottle, it won't ever get like properly wet enough. So when I go to do the rake and shake method, I'm gonna be constantly adding water and it's just gonna take all day. So I pour a little water on top. Is it gonna water down the product a little bit? That's the number one question I always get. Yeah, maybe a little. If you're using gel, it won't water it down as much as the products that I'm using. Um, but if you don't do it, you're gonna be constantly, especially with hair, like this, the spray bottle will water the hair down less. However, sorry, will like uh, dilute the product less. However, it depends on your hair type, whether or not a spray bottle is sufficient. I can tell you right now, just with coarser hair or more resistant hair, it's, the spray bottle just isn't enough in my experience. So I either run a faucet like that and just put my hand under to re-wet the hair, or I use a cup, or I will put, use a uh, shower head on a hose and drizzle water back over the hair. And that like gets it wet enough after I apply the product to be able to keep working with it. One second, I think somebody had a question. What was the name of the last product you used on your hair? It was the Vital Curl Soft Defining Mousse by Wee Dad. So the reason I want to keep my hair this wet is because controlling frizz is one of my big goals. And also once I start doing the rake and shake that I'm doing now, it helps the hair to come together. Now, I'll remind you, I only style my hair once a week. Yeah, I can turn around so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going around one vertical row at a time And you can see I just let down the section that I'm working with at a time. I rake through with the diamond brush just to smooth the wet frizz and get rid of any tangles. Then I put my fingers in like that. I use the other hand to pinch it at the top so it doesn't get stringy vertically. 
Then I rake my fingers through and I just do a little skipping rope motion. You can see how small that movement is, okay? A very small movement. And then I go to the next section. You want to make sure that the section horizontally is no wider than your knuckles. And vertically, how big you can get it vertically is going to depend a little bit on your hair. Typically, I would say start with like half inch sections, maybe three quarter of an inch sections. If it's getting stringy, try smaller sections. Oh, whoops, I forgot I was wearing mascara. I have a tendency to make my sections too tall at the back. So you can see that how I do the back, I don't really try to see what I'm doing. I just try to get a sense for whether or not the section is the right height. I brush through with the denim brush. I pinch it vertically and give it a little skipping rope section just to revive the curl. All we're doing with the skipping rope section is to stop it from being brushed straight. We're not making perfect ringlets. And I think that's something that can really slow people down is they think that the goal of the rake and shake method is finger curling or something like that, which it's, it's not. The goal of the rake and shake method is to create individual curl clumps that are a little bit bigger and less stringy than if you just scrunch your hair, okay? So it's gonna be a little bit of a more natural looking curl with a little bit more volume than if you were to finger curl your hair. Um, but it will also be faster because you're doing I have 20 times more hair than you, this would take forever. It does take longer with more hair, but chances are if you have 20 times more hair than me, you probably only have to do this once a week. Um, now I have a lot of hair. Um, so I would say I have, I'm not saying there are people with more hair than me, of course there are, but um, like I'm a, so I'm a, just to give you a sense, I'm a curly hairstylist. Um, so I do all types of hair and I, I teach this on people with all types of hair. You absolutely don't have to do this. Yeah, you wash your hair once a week. So let me tell you what I would tell my clients. If you're happy with the results that you're getting with your current routine, then you don't need to do this. <laughs> I'm not here to tell you to change your routine if you like the results you're getting. The reason I would teach you to do this, the only reason I would teach you to do the rake and shake method, is if you were looking to get more definition and more longevity out of your definition um, with less frizz. That would be the only reason I would teach you to do this. Uh, and with lots of hair, like, you like I'm pretty particular with the back of my head, so I go pretty slow. Um, so, like the alternative, uh, like if you're if you feel like this is taking too long, there's depending on how strong your curl pattern is, there are of course alternatives. You can just brush through your hair with a Denman brush, section by section. Once you get pretty fast at the rake and shake method, I would say it doesn't take that much longer than just brushing through with a Denman brush. Um, and I feel like depending on the hair type, I do feel like on some hair types, adding the rake can give you better results. Although there are certainly hair types where adding the rake doesn't make a huge difference. 
So you might notice guys, here I'm just going to leave the faucet running now because my hair is drying out a little bit. That's how, isn't that crazy? If you are if, uh, wild, if you guys were here earlier, you saw me literally pouring water over my head after I applied products. And my hair is already pushing that water out. Now part of that is because of the types of products I put into my hair. Um, so there's no gel in my hair, so it's drying more quickly. So yes, I'm applying water to my hair as I go because I want to keep it totally saturated. If the hair is not wet enough, it will tell you because it won't... Um, it won't react properly when you're doing the rake and shake method. And that's one of the biggest things people struggle with with the rake and shake method is you can tell when the hair is not wet enough. Just because the hair feels soaking wet doesn't mean it's wet enough. It's not so much about whether the hair is soaking wet enough, it's about was soaking wet or not. It's about whether or not the hair is behaving properly while you're doing the uh, rake and shake method. And especially while your technique is being honed, you might need the hair to be more wet than once you get your technique gets a little bit better with the rake and shake method. Once you get a little bit more comfortable with it, you might be able to get away with the hair, your hair being a little bit less wet. Okay, so now I'm starting to come around to the sides a little bit. Now you can see with these sides, I want to brush all these little pieces so they're coming straight out from where they grow. This was coming all the way back. I want it to come straight out from the head from where it grows. I ideally want the section to be about the width of my knuckles. This is maybe a little bit broader than that. So maybe this one will make its own little curl. I find I tend to take much smaller sections on my own head than I tend to take on my client's head. How long does it take for your hair to dry? Mine would take a day to dry completely. Yeah, mine too. Mine uh, is a little bit faster these days, um, but it takes about eight hours for my hair to air dry. That's why I don't air dry my hair. It's a little bit faster with the like with the products I use now. When I used to use gel in my hair, yeah, it was like eight hour, eight hours at least. I remember one day in hair school, I was like, I'm gonna try air drying my hair today, and I arrived at hair school. My hair was soaking wet still, and when I got home from hair school, my hair was still very wet. Like I looked like a drowned rat the entire day at hair school. It was very embarrassing. I think at around. 3.30 p.m. or something, I finally caved and went into like our lab and uh, at least di partially diffused my hair just because I was like, this is ridiculous, I'm freezing. What product did you put on to form a cast? That's a great question. So I have three products in my hair today. Oh no, I forgot to put it in the heat protectant. Hmm. That's not ideal. Oh, I forgot to put in so many products today. Oh, I'm really annoyed with myself. Um, so I put in, uh, I Create Definition is really the main casting product, which is a foam 
believe it or not. I know um, usually foams are pretty soft hold products, but I Create Definition is a product by InnerSense that is pretty strong hold. In fact, it's one of the strongest hold products that we sell at our salon, uh, which is very interesting. It's stronger hold than I would say any of our gels to the point that we will often use it as a topper with gels to make that gel stronger hold. And it's of course very lightweight because it's a gel. So I am using Eye Create Definition and I have paired the Eye Create Definition with uh, Vital Chrome Mousse. Uh, and the reason I pair them together is because the foam Eye Create Definition, even though it's a foam, I find it doesn't clump my hair very well. So, um, I like to mix it with a mousse to help my hair clump. I could have also paired it with like a, uh, a mousse. When younger, I put my hair in a wet ponytail, then diffuse it. Thirty years ago. Oh, that's interesting. Like just like a very loose ponytail, you mean? I'm trying to figure out what you, how that would work. Did you get a line from? That's cool. Can you use the eye create volume first and then eye create definition at the end? You sure can. I often do that. That's great for a great uh, product combo for fine hair. Okay, I'm gonna ditch this. Oh my god, sorry, the fan keeps turning on. I can't fight it. I actually would like to try that combo on my hair. I think it would be really nice. The only thing is I don't know if I create volume has any moisture rising properties. So I don't know if I would also need a curl cream with that product. I need to do more research on that product. Well, no, I have just so much hair. I'd leave my ponytail just to fuse it. We didn't have today's products. I'd leave the ponytail and just diffuse it. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, I see. You put it in a wet pony, like you, the ponytail would stay in and you'd just diffuse. That's so funny. Oh my God, that's not good for your scalp though. <laughs> but I'm sure it was really cute. So once I get here, so I watched, uh, I'm, okay, this is actually really funny. I was making a bunch of content about doing the rake and shake method the other day. And so I don't know, I was struggling for the longest time with the back of my head and I could not figure out why the back of my head was never turning out the way I wanted it to. So every time I styled the back of my head, it was coming out stringy. And I'm like, man, why am I always struggling with the back of my head? <laughs> And so anyways, I made a video doing the back of my head um, just for like tips and because people always ask me, how do you do the back of your head? So I was like, okay, hey, I'll make a video doing it. And I realized when I do the back of my head, my sections were like an inch tall vertically, which, you know, if I was to watch one of my clients doing that, it would be very obvious to me that that was why their hair was coming out stringy. That's too tall of a section vertically. But when you're doing it to yourself, you don't know you're doing that. <laughs> so if you have a section of your head that is never coming out the way you want it, I would highly recommend you get someone to film you doing it um, because it might be really obvious what you're doing wrong. 
And like, it's funny, like I know not to do that. I just couldn't see that I was doing it. No, uh, no. So I'm using a Denman brush. The purpose of the Denman brush is not right now to separate the hair. The purpose of the Denman brush is literally just to smooth the wet frizz. Um, you can use the Denman brush to separate the hair, but that's not how I'm using it. I'm using my fingers afterwards to create the sections. So you can see like I'm adding water as I go, especially as I go to get to this top section. Now we've been styling my hair for about 20 minutes. Now I'm pretty precious as I go through this. Like I really take my time and I have a fair amount of hair. Um, it's funny, I never thought of myself as having a lot of hair. And then my, cl my uh, colleague who has type four hair um, was like, you know, you kind of have like borderline high density hair. It's just not super, super curly. And I'm like, really? I don't consider myself to have that much hair. And she's like, no, you have quite a bit of hair. And I'm like, oh, okay. I never really thought about it. Um, so, you know, I do have a lot of hair. And that just, <laughs> that makes me feel better for how long it takes me to style my hair. Um, but I think I'm also very particular with how I like to do my hair because I know I'm not gonna do it again for seven days. So I just really want to make sure it turns out so that I don't have to refresh it for the next, I don't like to touch my hair again for three days. Would a comb work if you don't have a brush? That is such a great question. In my opinion, no. And the reason for that, I'm going to show you. Okay, so let me grab a comb. Okay, so let's use a comb. Any sort of comb would give you the same result. Okay, so look at the hair. If I brush through, it's kind of separating it like that. It's not gonna really smooth the frizz in the same way and it's definitely not clumping the hair. It is separating it sort of into separate groups, but do you see how like it's still stringy and stuff like that? And then see what happens. Do you see how it's starting to like clump everything together? Like we're trying to get it to clump. So a Denman brush is going to have resistance and it's gonna smooth frizz and clump it together. That's what you're trying to do. You want something that's gonna create resistance and this is doing the opposite. It's pulling it apart. You want something that's going to pull it all together and have resistance to smooth that rep frizz. I don't know, you can't really like see through the camera, but this is pulling on it and creating resistance to pull, to smooth that wet frizz. Okay, I brushed through that way too many times. There we go. However, I should do the caveat that brushing through soaking wet hair with a wide tooth comb is a different technique. It's not wrong, it's just a different technique that you can attempt if you have a wide tooth comb at home. It's not going to smooth frizz though. So if you're struggling with frizz, um, I would get a Denman brush. Um, a Denman brush, you can get them on Amazon. Uh, there's a lot of knockoffs. So there's a Denman storefront, I believe, on Amazon. Uh, I would definitely make sure it's from the Denman storefront. You can also, I think, order them directly from my salon, uh, which is linked in my bio. I should lead with that, I guess.
Okay, and you can see how I'm really just doing that skipping rope motion to reactivate the curl. Okay, once I get to the top of my head, I'm actually going to cut do a couple of brush curls just to make sure um, that. This is kind of a personal preference. I'm pretty fast at brush curls because I used to brush curl my entire head. Um, the reason, the main reason I don't brush curls, by the way, is what you see me doing on this. What? No, there's no problem with you asking questions about this. What is so special about the Denman brush? You know what? Nothing really. Um, what is so special about the Denman brush? There's probably plenty of other. Uh, brushes that are great. The Denman brush is just the Kleenex of brushes. You know how Kleenex is the most common tissue brand? Denman is a, a Denman is a line of brushes that is very popular with hairstylists. And so there are many Denman brushes. This is the D4. Um, it's linked in my bio, I think. Uh, there's an, it's not magic. The reason the Denman brush is very popular for this use is because it has rubber backing, which gives it really good resistance. Um, it's cleanable, which is why it's popular with hairstylists. You can pop this out, remove all the uh, bristles, and you can clean it so you're not going to get mold growing in it. Like this brush will last you your, the rest of your life. Um, I think I have three of them and they all look brand new. Like I've had them now for three or four years and like you would think I just bought them. So they're very good quality brushes. Um, uh, but like, yeah, like what's so special about them? They work really, really well. That, that's about it. But like, could you use a different brush with rubber backing? Yes, for sure you could. I do have a knockoff of the Denman brush that I bought on Amazon, and I do not like it um, as much as the Denman brush. And considering it was only about eight dollars, like I think it was seven or eight dollars cheaper than the Denman brush, like which is like the cost of a latte. I'm like, I think I should have just bought the regular Denman brush because um, it's that much worse. Like <laughs> you would like, in my opinion, I should have just. Like, I would just tell someone to buy a Denman brush. Um, but I don't work with Denman, by the way. Um, like, I don't have an affiliate partnership with them or anything. I just think the Denman brush is better. Um, but with that said, instead of buying a knockoff Denman, if you don't want to buy a Denman brush, I think you're better off buying, like, a paddle brush, something like that. That because then in my experience, the knockoff Denmans on Amazon are pretty crap. I'm sure there's like some good knockoff Denmans out there, but like I think you're better off buying like a paddle brush um, from the dollar store or something that has a smooth handle and just using that instead. That's like decent quality. Something that has rubber backing and enough bristles to give you resistance when you're brushing through the hair. That's really what you need. But yeah, no, that's a really good question and I get asked that from time to time and the truth is what's so special about the Denman brush? It just, it just works, like it works well. Um, but yeah, it's certainly not magic. It's not like there's no other brush that could be used to replace this purpose. And if you want to experiment with some other brushes, you absolutely can. Okay, we're almost done. Thank God, I want to get to drying my hair. It's already eight o'clock. I just poked myself in the eye.
So you can see I literally just kind of brush curl like this. Ooh, you guys can't even really see what I'm doing. And I find that this kind of gets all of my top layer of uh, spirals really just looking kind of perfect <laughs> and all going away from my face and very frizz free because I'm very prone to uh, halo frizz. Do that section okay so now that I've done all of that one second what about the Cantu knockoff of the Demi Rush oh I don't know I haven't tried it I didn't know that they had one okay so I'm gonna use the t-shirt towel now Do you ever use inner sense inner piece on your hair? I have a similar cut style as you and hair frosty. Is inner piece the whipped cream texturizing paste? Is that what inner piece is? Okay. So I'm gonna start just by scrunching that product into my hair. And then I'm gonna take a t-shirt towel You don't want to over scrunch your hair. Oh, I haven't used uh, the texturizing paste on my hair. However, I use it on a lot of my clients. So for anybody who is wondering what we're talking about, uh, InnerSense has a whipped texture paste. Um, and it's kind of like a, a very heavy texture cream. Um, you apply it to, or at least I use it on dry hair. You emulsify it in your hand, not with water, just on its, just rub it on your palms. And then you can scrunch it, you can use it to, I you typically use it to break the cast. Um, and it's a great way to help the hair look more full. I really like using it on very uh, silky hair to add a little bit of texture without the hair feeling too gunky or producty. Okay. Now, I could, uh, you could also put a little bit of it on your fingertips and use it to zhuzh your roots. It would probably be nice in my hair in that way. Um, my hair's not super silky. My roots are more silky, but my ends are not so much. So I could use it at my roots for sure. Okay, so I like to go in with some InnerSense hairspray, especially around there. So especially here where I tend to get frizzy. Okay. And let's get diffusing. So I don't know if that adds some thermal protection. It doesn't say, I don't think there's any thermal protection in there. No, I think it's just uh, helps hair dry maybe a touch faster and it helps everything's like hold together. the hair to not get frizzy when you start diffusing it. Um, okay. So I'm gonna, I've got the diffuser on the low heat setting. It's kind of 
have a medium heat. This is my Lifen blow dryer. Would you love a quick review of what products you used in the beginning for those who had maybe a screaming toddler running around? You know, hypothetically. Um, yeah, so I used the Serenity Smoothing Cream. Oh yeah, there was thermal protection in this. That makes me feel better. For a second I thought I forgot to use thermal protection today. I feel like I made my part too far over today and I feel like that's going to really annoy me during my... Um, three scotches, but whatever, it's done now. Um, so I use the Serenity Smoothing Cream as my uh, draw cream. It's really a blowout cream, but anyway. Then I did, I create Definition. This is a foam that has very strong holes. And I did about eight pumps of that. But if you've got fine hair, I would start with one or two pumps because it's a very strong hole product. It gives you a very strong cast. Uh, I mean, cast, if you don't know what it is, is a product that gives you uh, like stiffness or crunchiness. But don't worry, I'm not gonna like walk around with crunchy hair today. We're gonna get rid of that before I'm done styling my hair. Then I went in with a mousse. So you go from lightest product to heaviest product. So then I went in with a Vital Curl mousse. Okay, so I like to have a defined part. So I just cover diffuse for a couple of minutes, but I want my hair to be as curly as possible. So I just do a couple of seconds of hover diffusing, and then I'm going to uh, start pixie diffusing my hair. So hover diffusing creates uh, the least amount of frizz. Uh, you literally hover around the hair for about eight, ten, eight, ten centimeters away. Creates the least amount of frizz, but it doesn't do anything to encourage your curl. So, now I'm going to pixie diffuse. Now, pixie diffusing does have the potential to create frizz if you're not careful. Um, that's why I like to start with hover diffusing. If your hair gets frizzy really, really easily, you might want to hover diffuse a little bit longer. If your hair does not get frizzy easily and you really want to encourage your curl, you might want to pixie diffuse longer. Okay, so it's really up to you. So I hover, and if you wanted to find the part, you're probably going to want to just start with hover diffusing upright. If you don't want a defined part, you can go straight into pixie diffusing if you want. If you have fringe, if you have bangs, you're going to want to hover diffuse your bangs, probably first. Okay. I usually like to hover diffuse upside down for a couple of seconds first. Okay, and now I'm going to start pixie diffusing. So my key to pixie diffusing is you want to hold position. If you just move the diffuser, so I'm cupping the, the hair with the diffuser. If I just move the diffuser every like four seconds, I'm going to create a lot of volume, which might be your goal. But I'm also going to create a lot of frizz, and I'm going to break up all these curl clumps. So if I don't want to create frizz, and I don't want to break up the curl clumps, then I'm going to hold positions for longer. So that's going to be kind of your, like if you've ever said, oh, I can't diffuse my hair. I have to air dry. Every time I diffuse my hair, my hair gets really big, really poofy. I can't diffuse my hair. Then you need to hold position, hold the diffuser in one position for longer, okay? And also potentially hold your head in the same position for longer. Hairspray versus gel. So if we're talking about curly hair, a, make sure you're using a hairspray that is for curly hair because hairspray that is not for curly hair, um, first of all, you can't get wet and restyle it so you won't be able to refresh your hair. Second of all, it's more likely to build up on your hair if it's not for curly hair. Um, hairspray versus gel. Hairspray that is for curly hair 
Uh, it's going to be very, very lightweight. Um, I find it's great at like encouraging the curl. So you you're supposed to typically hair spray or curl hair. You're typically supposed to apply it to either damp or wet hair. So I applied it to I would say damp hair today. Versus gel, I like to apply it to soaking wet hair. So typically hairspray I apply to my hair after I've styled and um, plop, then micro plop my hair. So like after I've scrunched my hair. I usually don't use hairspray as the only product because it usually needs at least a curl cream or something to go with it. Um, it's like I said, very, very lightweight and it tends to dry very quickly. In fact, often hairsprays will make your hair dry a little bit faster and will set very, very quickly. And because of that, they can, one second. And because of that, sorry, just have to block somebody. And because of that, they tend to make your hair curlier. Or appear, I should say, appear curlier. Gels, there are all sorts of different types of gels. Um, gels can be light, can be heavy, um, but they're not gonna set or dry as quickly. Um, if you're on TikTok, can you guys just like comment a couple of times to hide that last comment? Um, the, uh, thank you. Um, gel, um, so gel sets, like it'll take longer to set. Typically gel is full of like, Oh yeah, so typically gel takes a little bit longer to dry, so it's going to take a little bit. Uh, it's not necessarily going to encourage your curl quite as much, but that is a generalization. There are gels for all hair types, so I would say gel is going to, you might be, a, I don't know, it, it's hard to compare. Like, yeah, hairspray is going to dry a lot faster, it's going to be lighter weight than gel, than a gel. You can combine the two, but there are gels for all hair types. Okay, thank you. I just never saw you use a hairspray before you diffused. Yeah, I've been using the eye create finish really frequently in the salon. Um, so I use the hairspray, but I didn't use hairspray as my only whole product. I also use a foam and a mousse. I've really been gravitating towards very lightweight whole products on my hair because I like a lot of volume. And I like my hair to dry more quickly. I create finish, if that's what you use before this step. Yeah, I create finish is the name of the hairspray that I use. It's an inner sense product. I don't know if it's what I'm wearing in this live. I've been attracting bad energy. 
you could dress more modestly, apparently. What if you don't have or don't want to diffuse? Okay, um, so um, this is a question that I get, I have, I have this conversation all the time in the salon with my clients. So if you want to air dry your hair, there's gonna be a series of questions that I'm gonna ask you if you're sitting in my chair. Uh, because a lot of the times you book an appointment with me, especially a curl coaching appointment, it's because you're not getting the results that you want at home, okay? So if you're sitting down and you're like, I want to air dry my hair, then I'm going to ask you a series of questions because ultimately I want to help you achieve your goal, right? So the first question I'm going to ask you is, how long is it taking your hair to air dry? Okay? So how long is it taking your hair to air dry? Is it taking two hours for your hair to air dry? Is it taking an hour for your hair to air dry? Is it taking five hours, eight hours, ten hours for your hair to air dry? My next question is, is your hair turning out frizzier than you would like? My next question is, is your hair, would you like your hair to be, to appear curlier? Like, is your goal to enhance your curl? My next question is, would you like more volume? Do you want your hair to have more volume? Um, then I'm going to ask you some questions about your lifestyle. Like, when you style your hair, do you style your hair in the morning or do you style your hair at night? Um, after you style your hair, do you drive to work right away? Or are, do you have to put your kids, make your kids lunches and uh, play with them on the floor? Or do you have to uh, leave the house right away and drive to work? We're going to have some comment, or do you just style your hair and then sit down and work from home? Like, what is your lifestyle? All of these things are going to really inform me as to whether or not you're a good candidate for air drying. Okay, so now let's talk about what all this means. Ultimately, air drying, diffusing is going to be the easiest way to enhance your curl, give you more volume, and control it. In fact, with air drying, it is going to be very difficult for us to enhance your curl. We can do some things to give you more volume with cuts and with products. Um, but it's also, when it comes to controlling frizz, if your hair is taking longer than two hours to air dry, absolutely there's going to be some stuff we can do to control frizz. Absolutely. But I would be willing to bet that air drying is one of the reasons you're getting so much grit. Now, that doesn't mean you have to 100% diffuse. If you're like, I absolutely cannot diffuse my hair all the way because of X, Y, Z, we can come up with a hybrid for you. For example, cover diffusing until you start to feel a cast and then air drying the rest of the way. Even that will make a big difference in your final result. everything being all or nothing. I have to either diffuse my hair for an hour or I have to air dry. It's not all or nothing. It's absolutely not all or nothing. Honestly, five or ten minutes of diffusing your hair could make a very big difference in your final result. And it could cut your air dry time by an hour. Those five or ten minutes of diffusing. So it's like, it, wouldn't that actually be a time saving for you? Having an hour less of wet hair throughout your day? I don't know, I, I hate having wet hair, so for me that would be worth it.
So you can see as my hair becomes less wet, I can move, my hair is 95% dry now. You can see I'm moving the diffuser a lot more. I'm starting to build the volume a little bit. I'm starting to allow the cast to break a little bit. I think that's what I'm doing wrong and why I'm so frizzy, I only air dry. Yeah, absolutely, and that's why we have that conversation because I think if I just go in and say, you have to diffuse your hair, that's not helpful, right? <laughs> but let's have a conversation about what the pros and cons are between air drying and diffusing, and then let's have a conversation about what's realistic for you, and then in the salon appointment, of course I'm gonna diffuse your hair because you don't have time for your hair to air dry, and you're gonna see the difference. You're going to see the difference the diffusing makes for your hair. And when you see that difference, it's really eye-opening. And then you can conceptualize, okay, how can I find either a hybrid solution, a workflow that will work in my lifestyle, or maybe even, is this worth it for me to take 20 minutes to diffuse my hair once a week? so I can get these results that ultimately this is what my goal is for my hair. Or like I said, find a hybrid solution of taking 10 minutes to diffuse my hair to get maybe 30% of the way to these results or 50% of the way to these results that is 50% better than what I'm getting today. that last little bit of the way. Suggestions on how to refresh hair after a sweaty workout. Um, this is a really good question. I think it depends, so much of it depends on how you want to refresh your hair. Because at the end of the day, there's some people who no matter what I suggest to them, they're gonna leave and they're gonna jump in the shower and wet their hair. So if that's you, and you work out every single day, and I can make all the suggestions in the world, and you're gonna go, and you're like, no gal, I'm disgusting, I need to wet my hair after my workout, then just don't shampoo your hair after every single workout if you're working out every day, co-wash, okay? Every, at least sometimes, co-wash. I don't want you shampooing your hair every day. But if you're like, no, it's okay, I don't have to wet my hair after every workout, um, Weedad has a really great post-workout mist that counteracts the effects of sweat and doesn't build up in your hair. I think it's literally called their post-workout mist. I haven't tried it, but my clients have and they speak really highly of it. I think it's in a gray or white bottle. Um, I typically recommend that you use your diffuser and you dry your hair first to kind of see where you stand. And then if you feel like you need something, once everything is dry, then apply something, okay? Start from dry hair. Don't start applying stuff to sweaty, wet, damp hair. I told you I made the part too far on one side. It already corrected itself. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to fix this now. One second. I have a cowlick here, 
or like a crown cowlick whatever so anytime I try to put this on this side it just refuses I don't know what I was thinking today so to fix that I just need to re-wet right at the root if you take it takes at least 30 minutes to diffuse I mean that took us almost 30 minutes did it not but uh, Diva Curl has a really great product called D uh, Diva Fast, I think it's called, or Diva Dry. Um, and it, they say it speeds up dry time up to 60%. I think it's probably more like 40%. But yeah, they've got a great product. Because hairspray is going to be a little bit faster, but really the reason my hair dried so fast is a little bit to do with the hairspray, but a lot to do with the fact that there's no gel in my hair. I'm using foams, mousses, you know, I'm using a lightweight curl cream. Like, it's an ecosystem of reasons. It's not just because of the hairspray. My hair is higher porosity now than it used to be. Like, there's a lot of reasons my hair is drying pretty fast. So just adding hairspray is not gonna magically make your hair dry super, super fast. I just don't wanna like misrepresent it. Although adding hairspray might make your hair dry a little bit faster. But like to me, the hairspray on its own is just gonna make like maybe like a 5% difference. Maybe a 10%. So you can see I put those root clips in to add lift on this side so it didn't immediately fall. Um, and then this side had a little bit more lift already. Here we go. Well, the curl is pretty nice. Let's check out the back. Yeah, the back has been turning out so much better since I started, just started taking those smaller sections. Let me show you the back. So that was my issue. I was just taking sections that were too big. Yay! I'm really happy with how the back turned out. But anyways, this is also, I think, really good for you to see. Like, just be, if you're not exactly happy with how things turn out, if you made a mistake, it's very fixable. You can always fix how things turn out. You're not, like, stuck with how things turn out at the end. Um, I made my part too far. I just re-wet the roots. I'm not even going to fix the rest of it. I think it's fine. Um, I'm just going to hover now that I re-wet the roots so that they're lying where I want them. Hover diffuse them. I'll do more of a refresh on that section tomorrow, but it's good enough for today. We can get too precious about it. And then I'm going to put it on a cool setting now. And I'm going to do the cool shot on this top section. And I'm going to take these clips out and I'm going to shake everything out. wait until day two to put in my texture spray but I think I'm going to experiment with adding that texture spray in today I don't normally do that but I don't see why I shouldn't yay okay 
Okay, so when I add in texture spray, I like to add it all throughout. This is the Going Up Volumizing Texture Spray by Wee Dad. I love this product. And basically this is going to add, my roots are always very silky, so I don't get a lot of volume at my roots. It's not bad, but I like more, especially because I'm due for a haircut. So I'm gonna add it all throughout at the roots. Don't forget that magic spot right above your ears. Okay, and don't forget the back. And now, I don't think Weedad sells that texture spray anymore. It's so sad. No. Really? I noticed that we don't have it in the salon. <gasps> it's so good though. The Amiga one is pretty good. It's so good. Why would they stop selling it? Oh, and I'm almost out. Jalen, congrats, by the way. I saw that you just got a job in a curly hair salon. I've been following you. Okay. So then I'm gonna shake it out. Shake it out. And I'm literally shaking and then bringing it out one inch. Shake, bring it out one inch. Shake, bring it out one inch. Bring it out one inch. Yeah, Living Proof does have a good texture spray, you're right. We sell that one in this salon too. <laughs> Might need a little bit more product. I don't think I have quite enough. You should feel it like building. So I can see it building a little bit more on that side. I don't think I have quite enough product on this side. So let's get a little bit more in here. And I find most of the volume is built, I used to always think most of the volume was built up here, but actually I find most of the volume is built like lower than you realize, like right above the ears. How's that? Oh, that's a wet brush. Yeah. My hair is just not wanting to create volume today. But that's day one here for you. Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna mess with it any more than that. The product is in there. I'm just going to get more. It, I feel like it's a little bit better than it was. I can't add any more product or shake it out any more than that or I'm gonna start getting frizz. So, <laughs> um, Yeah, I'm starting to lose a little bit of definition. You can see I'm starting to lose definition a little bit right here where I've been sticking my fingers in, right here. So I'm gonna leave it there.
pretty happy. And throughout the day, anytime that I want to like build volume or if I'm feeling my hair is falling flat, the product is in my hair. So I can just flip my hair upside down, give it a little shake, and it'll like just give it a little bit more zhuzh. But now that the product is in there, tomorrow when I wake up, I just shake my hair upside down and every day I'll have more and more body and volume because that's just the way my hair is. I just shake it out. Okay, thanks so much for joining today. This is the final result, and I'm not gonna style my hair again until next Wednesday. Um, I will maybe do like a little refresh, probably not tomorrow, probably Friday morning. I protect my hair at night with either a bonnet or a silk scarf to prevent it from getting frizzy and to prevent moisture loss because that's one of the biggest challenges I get is my hair getting dry. Now the InnerSense products are very breathable. Um, so I find you can add water without, you know how some products if you add a little bit of water, they get very frizzy. Um, so you have to like get them fully wet again. I find the InnerSense products are less like that. They're very breathable. So you can tend to like add, take one curl and add a little bit of water. Um, uh, how do you not wash your, so anyways, InnerSense products are really great at doing water refreshes. I've never been able to do water refreshes. I've always had to use refreshing products um, until I switched to InnerSense. Um, and I should pick up some eye create volume because eye create volume is also a great product for uh, refreshing hair if you just need to add a little bit of definition. Um, how do you not wash your hair for a week? How does it not get greasy? I don't have fine hair. Uh, the hair that's medium to coarse tends to not get greasy as quickly. If you have medium or coarse hair that does get greasy very quickly, could be a sign of a medical issue. And if it's not a medical issue, you probably need to clarify your hair or take a look at the products that you're using on your hair or both. <laughs> um, if you're not clarifying your hair right now, pick up a clarifying shampoo, a good quality clarifying shampoo, the one that I recommend uh, yeah, so if you have fine hair, you might need to shampoo your hair twice a week. That's more normal. Um, some people with fine hair uh, can get away with washing their hair only once a week, but it's less common. Okay, guys, I gotta get ready for work. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I go live every single Wednesday, or not most Wednesdays, at 7.15. Um... If you want to book with me, you can send me a DM or you can text the salon. Actually, no, that's not true. You can book with me online. Um, I just got online booking, so feel free uh, to check that out. The link for the salon website is uh, at the link in my bio. The clarifying shampoo that I recommend is Malibu C. They've got two. Undo Goo is just a good all-around product build-up one. Um, if you have hard water, they also have hard water wellness. If you don't know where to pick them up, you can order them online through my uh, salon website, so you can go check that out. Um, I, I, I'm sure you might be able to find them elsewhere online as well. You can check that out as well. Um, yeah, other than that, feel free to send me a DM if you have any other questions. Um, I don't do custom product recommendations typically through my DMs anymore um, because I, I don't know your hair. I haven't seen, touched, feel your, felt your hair and I don't want to make bad recommendations for you um, and tell you to go buy a product that I don't actually know if it's right for your hair. Otherwise, have a wonderful rest of your day, my darlings. Goodbye, see you soon.